Hello, <clears throat> good evening, and uh, welcome to um, another technical video, which is um, probably not going to be watched by very many people because uh, my technical videos don't tend to get many views. They, uh, everybody wants to see the Dyson being pushed round in there or the Henry coming out. So this one really is going to be probably for Dorian from Hooverlux who has put a request in for me to get this down and show him how to take a motor out or to get the bottom off and what's inside basically because uh, he's a little bit uh, unsure of how to remove the motor from an Electrolux 500 so he says he's got a fair few of them upstairs he polishes them up but he wants he's asked me very politely and I'm sure I can oblige anything for Dorian if you know what I mean he seems to like all my other technical videos um, I, can't, I can't understand why he likes my technical videos so much but uh, there we go so today we're going to just be uh, working on this here Electrolux 500 and uh, we're going to be turning it over and basically taking the brush roll out, taking the motor cover out, removing the motor, having a look at the parts inside the bottom and um, then putting it all back together. So if anyone does get one of these and wants to replace the motor in it then I think it's a pretty straightforward procedure in these actually because I've, I've had the motors out of these before. There's not a lot to the Electrolux 500 really. So without further ado, let's um, let's get down to business then, shall we? This is the uh, Electrolux 560 model, which uh, it's dated from 1983, and uh, it's based on the same design as the, the 500 that came out in the early 70s, which I also have got upstairs, but um, this one's going to be probably easier to work on at the moment. It's cleaner inside. So. In the usual way, let's get the camera down onto the workbench, or I should I say, the, the sideboard here. And uh, we can commence operations, can't we? There we go. So, I'm going to first of all, I'm going to tip it over onto its front and lay it upside down. Being quite gentle with these because being very old now they don't like being knocked about terribly much. I think I might have to put some cloth underneath here just to make sure that doesn't scratch on the sink top. Right. I'll just lay that down underneath here. I haven't got the luxury of Dorian has of having a garage with a, a wallpapering table, whatever it is. I think he uses a wallpapering table to do his refurbs on. He's always going on about it being rickety, so I'm assuming it must be a wallpapering table. Right, let's have a look then. What can the camera see of that? Oh, it can see quite well actually, that can. Oh, that's good, yes. Right, so what we're going to do first then, we're going to take the base plate off the sole plate. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to use a large flat bladed screwdriver to remove these two screws. In fact, no, that won't fit, will it? Uh, we've got a smaller one here. I used to use the electric screwdriver but that one's, uh, it doesn't work anymore and I might have a problem getting these off now because they take ages and ages and ages to unscrew manually. I only have a select amount of tools down here you see in the kitchen, the rest of them are all upstairs in my toolbox and uh, I've usually got a big flat bladed screwdriver here, a couple of uh, Phillips head drivers, there's uh, my pliers are down here, my mole grips, they're usually the tools I need to work on a vacuum cleaner but for some reason my big screwdriver it's just a little bit too big to go in them. They're flat, sorry, they're, yeah, they're flat bladed heads on these and, oh, don't tell me you're going to be awkward. No, it's coming. It's coming. It's going to be nice and, nice and uh, easy for me. Very strange, really, with these having um, flat headed screws in like that. But that's what they've got. So two of those. And then we can remove the sole plate. Let me just pull it over a little bit further towards the camera here. Can we see better? Yeah. So that's removed. We're going to remove the sole plate and then we'll just remove that downwards and remove the sole plate altogether. Simple as. So I don't think it's necessary to remove this uh, tube at this point, although we can do. So in order to remove the pipe, what we'd have to do is these undo these two screws here, 
we've got one, two, I'm going to undo those and we should be able to remove that pipe. So I apologise if you can't see very well on the camera there, but that's, that's it. I'll move it a little bit further forwards. Okay, so these are two uh, Phillips head screws. That's one. And this is the other one, that's two. Take that off there so that, whoops, that's what we've got now. That's the retainer for the hose, which should. Sometimes it can be a little bit of a swine to get out. It should just pull off. What might be stopping it is the wheel mechanism. We might have to remove the wheel mechanism here. Let's remove that. And then we might have to remove our hose, then mightn't we? So the wheel mechanism, what we're going to need to do is first of all to remove those clips from underneath here, that's one. And then we're going to remove the other one from the other side, like so. And then we should be able to take the wheels off, like so. Put that over here. And then we can get these two screws out here and take out the pedal. Once again, I just have to have routine little checks on the camera to make sure that we're all okay. I wouldn't want Dorian to be missing anything vital now, would I? He likes to see the important stuff on film. He says he does enjoy watching my technical videos, does Dorian. Well, I enjoy your, watching your technical videos, Dorian, just as good. So, we always like to see you behind that workbench, working, working away on those Hoover Juniors and those Kirby's. Right, so, that should... I wonder why it's being so difficult, this thing here. Usually it falls off quite easily. The rubber is its a little bit finicky sometimes. Can we get our screwdriver underneath or give it a bit of a twist? Hmm. Aren't all vacuum cleaners fun, Dorian? Hmm? Well, that seems to have pulled that off, but the rubber's been left behind, and uh, now oh, there we go, look. That's out. So, how will I make sure I get that back in again? I think what we're going to have to do is to screw. Will that go in from underneath? Yeah, well that should really have pulled out quite easily, shouldn't it? Um. Yeah, that goes back in like so. I think it's just the way the rubber has got a little bit uh, sticky over the years and it's it's been a little bit difficult to pull that out. So, I take it that goes in last. So we have to screw the hose into the rubber. This is going to be fun. You always seem to like, it's like you get something apart and then you think, how on earth am I going to get that back together again? Yeah. Basically, I'm trying to get that rubber back onto the end of the hose. And that could be easier said than done as well, because it won't twist. I think that might be okay. It seems to have gone in. And then we can put the um, the white plastic part in, yeah. And then when it has to go back in, we just have to just squeeze that back into place. I might put a little bit of washing up liquid on there just to get that back in. But yeah, that's the uh, that's the the internal hose removed. And these quite often can split or break. These can it's like on a dice in the internal hose. 
So, let's remove the brush roll and just uh, pull the side trim to one side slightly and then we can just lift that out. And again, you can see the uh, bearings inside there. So you can get the uh, the bearing cut. Now that would normally, that little piece there, be inside here, like so. Inside the bearing. Uh, the, this is the end cap, isn't it? So then we can see inside there, there's the little bearing there, the brush roll bearing. That doesn't come off very easily. We'll do the same with the other end. So again, we have this uh, rubber bearing cover on the end and that's covered in grease and oil because I remember oiling these last time so there's the parts we get okay so you can take your brush roll apart very easily and here's the little bearings and then you can do is you can slide your brushes out at the end as well these brushes will slide out of the brush roll uh, I don't think the last time I did that yes they, they come out very easily look you can just slide those in and out. So I'm assuming that you could get replacement bristles for these if you um, if you needed them. But I'm not sure how easy that would be. But yeah, they do. They slide out very easily, just like on an old Hoover Senior brush roll. So as we're not going to be greasing those because they're absolutely fine, I shall put the end cap back on. And uh, and one on the other end as well. And you can see they spin really nicely. That's what that's what you're looking for, and I'm sure you know that, don't you, Dorian? You know it's uh, fairly straightforward brush roll that one. Here we can see the belt. This is a an electro part belt, which means it's shite. Pardon the language there, but they are. They don't last five minutes when they're on the machine. They stretch. And they're not very good. Right. So what we're going to do to get the motor, we're going to remove one screw here. Um, the one screw there, okay, there's one here, one there, one there, and one there. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six screws. And there's one here as well, just by the wheel. So that'll make seven. So I'm going to remove those now. They're all Phillips head screws. Just make sure we can uh, see that. I think you can. I think you can roughly. The thing is, that we're, we're taking the um, pedal off now. It always wants to lie flat rather than at, like this angle. That angle's easier for the camera, I suppose. But it's pretty self-explanatory when you can see underneath here and you can see the screws you need. That's another one. It's, it has a very, very um, different air path to uh, being a standard one. It puts the exhaust out through this passageway here and then goes up the back of the cleaner to exhaust out the back here. And then the, uh, the input comes through that side. So I always found these a very interesting design, to be honest, the uh, Electrolux 500. Yeah, I did. And then inside, inside here you've got your uh, little bleed valve there, if the camera can pick that up. That's the little valve that opens up on the top of the cover to make it easier to push. I mean, these weren't difficult to push even on full suction anyway, because uh, they had a 500 watt motor, so they weren't that powerful. That's that one, and then we've got this one down here. That's that, take that one out. Now this screwdriver isn't magnetic is it, so I can't get to that one at the moment, we'll just have to get that later. And then you've got one down here, right by the side of where the belt housing is, between the wheel and the belt housing. And that one's a little bit more uh, tricky I think, well, you might find it trickier. Aha, that one's come out magnetically. I wonder if this one will do the same, yeah, how about that? Only just though. Right, 
So now we've got all our screws out, we should be able to lift off the motor cover. There's one linker, one spring here that's attached to the, uh, the motor cover, if we can see that just there. So I'm going to just unhook that spring off the motor cover. It's attached to the wheels, so we take the spring off. Okay. Now, hopefully, we can remove the lower motor cover, just like so. Okay. Put that to one side. And then at this point, you'll be able to see that the uh, machine will separate. You'll be able to remove, well, you won't be able to remove it because the wire will still be obviously attached. And you'll have your little um, bearings, which are made of felt on this. And the bearings go one here, I'll take that one off, and there's one on the other side as well. And on, on the bottom here, let me get the camera up vertically over the top. So, essentially, let me just make sure the focus is right. This camera is not terribly wonderful with focusing just these days. So you've got um, this gasket that runs all the way around. You can see that. That basically is the, uh, the fan case gasket where the two halves go together. Here's the belt here. I will uh, just slip that off the uh, motor spindle now. So yeah, you can see that that is an electro part belt. That's a pattern part, it's not an original one. It's only a very small belt on the Electrolux 500, as I'm sure you well know. So we'll put that belt over to one side here as well. Um, so, the, what we can do is we can remove the terminals here for the motor. They're not actually um, screwed on uh, to a terminal block. So we've got three terminals, effectively. We've got a, a white terminal, we've got a brown terminal and a blue one. Now I'm assuming that might be because this is the uh, variable power model, it's the 560 which has that control on the electronic. I, th I don't know why there are um, three wires to this motor, but essentially I'm going to try and remove those wires. See how easy they are to remove, I think they just lift off. Yes, they just pull off upwards. One, be very careful with this little circuit board because I'm sure these might be easy to snap off. There's two. And then there's this one here which is the blue one. I might need the pliers for that one. Might not yet. No, that just pulls straight off like that. So we've got white on the bottom and then we've got brown on the left, blue on the right. Uh, and it should be possible to remember that from the, uh, the, the way those wires are located, like so. So then what we can do is we can um, remove the rubber gasket, like so. Pull the rubber gasket away, we'll put that to one side. And then what we have is the, the cable has got a little locator uh, a little cable tie, a table tidy, which keeps the cable locked into this part down here and we can lift that out like so. Okay, so that goes into that corner there and then we can completely remove the, the upper part from the lower part like so. Right, and there's your, there's your bearing there for the other side. Now as I'm not going to be stripping down this part, I'm going to leave the bearing where it is on there. And uh, you can see that there. So that, um, that port there, that's actually the exhaust port where the exhaust air goes out and that's why the cable's black, because the, the, the exhaust soot goes up there. And you can see inside there, that's where the cable runs. This port here, this is where your suction comes into the motor and it comes down there and into here. So your suction is drawn in through that port and the, uh, the dirt obviously goes in up that way. And as you know, you've got to be very gentle with these as well because these snap off very, 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 very easily. Most of these are all broken by now anyway, but this one actually still seems to be just about intact. So there we go. Here, therefore, is the motor. We have a rubber mounting on this end 
and your fan case sail on that end. At this point you can lift out, I've just got grease on my fingers, but you can lift out the front wheel mechanism basically just lifts out of the, uh, the cleaner like so. So uh, we'll put that over to the one side and then you can see your adjuster mechanism here I shall leave that in position because there's no need to take that out but otherwise we've uh, pretty much stripped everything out of here now apart from the motor which just lifts I'll put this camera back up here but yeah that motor it just basically just gets around to one side of it and it just lifts out like that and there we have the base with nothing else left in. Um, there's your serial number on the on the base there for anybody that wants to see it. I'm not sure if I can get that any closer. So 326 on the serial number there is uh, I would assume it's 26th week of 1983 when that was made. It couldn't have been 1973 and it couldn't have been 1993 so that was 83. Yep. So we put this in here. Right now, this is the uh, this is the the good old uh, Electrolux 500 motor. It's a twin fan, as you can see. And um, when I had this off, basically. Um, I've actually, when I put it all back together again, I used gaffer tape or duct tape, black duct tape all around here to seal that back up. So I'm not going to be taking that again apart, but all you do is you pull the tape off, separate your um, fan housing, would really you be able to clean your fans out inside then. I don't want to do it now again because I have, I'd have to <laughs> redo all this. But basically, yeah, you can see week 26, 1983, it's on there. So it is a 1983 model. But your carbon brushes are just here. I'm looking at those and I'm just wondering how you would... Um, separating the motor on this, there's the, uh, the rubber seal from the end, so that would be able to get to the end bearing here. You've got your little tiny circuit board there with a little tiny resistor on it. I don't know what that's for. Maybe that's a suppressor, I don't know. No, it isn't, because the suppressor was in the handle. I took that, I've took that out long ago. After Roger did that video where, he blew, where his blew up, I uh, thought, well, i better take mine out. Basically, you've got a, a clip here. I think those clips uh, come off. There's my screwdriver. And will they enable the end of the motor to come off? That's one. And then we've got another clip around this side, so that's two. Now does that, I think, the only drawback with doing this, as soon as I pull this off the carbon brushes are going to go absolutely flying. And I'm having a look now to see if I remove these carbon brushes by bending that tab up, that is liable to snap off. So, hmm, I would imagine that uh, that's going to remove the field housing along with the top bearing if I pull that up. I don't really want to do that at this stage because if I do, the, the carbon brushes are going to come popping out and I'm going to not be able to get them back in again onto the commutator. If you wanted to try bending those back like so, to get that spring out and the brushes, you know, you, you're fairly welcome to do that, but I can't see any other way of being able to get those brushes out of there. They are sort of pressed in, the, bear, the brush housings here. But looking at the little inspection window there, I can see that there are, there's a fair bit of carbon left on those. Um. I'm just wondering whether, how would be the easiest way of removing this without doing damage to those brushes. 
I hate these type, you know, where you've got to bend the end over because they are so easily so easily damaged or broken and uh, I think we need to bend that bend that tab over and then bend is this actually attached to that? Yeah, it's soldered on, so you can't... The end of this is actually... There's the, the brush end there, and it's actually the brush is soldered onto that joint. So removing this is not going to be viable unless you've got a soldering iron to re-solder that onto the end of there. It's very, very tricky that one is. So I don't think these are really designed to have new brushes put in them. Well, if they are, then it's a soldering job. So I'm going to put that back and put those two clamps back on. I think what I did, I, it's rather than separating this, I took the fan case off last time, which is why I've got all this black um, tape around and then I was able to get to the bottom bearing by removing the fans and you can get to the top bearing from here so really there's no need to separate the motor so I'm going to push that very very gently and very very carefully back down and hope to God that it doesn't snap off because that sometimes is what can happen with these I do not like these type of brush housings at all because my soldering iron at the moment has run out of gas and I haven't got an electric one, I had a gas powered one and I've got no more gas. I don't smoke anymore you see but when I used to smoke I used to have gas lighters and the, the gas refills for it but now I don't. Right let's... well that's, that's, that, that's, that's very lucky that's gone over without snapping so we'll be alright there so that, that's, how it, uh, that's how it looks again. What we're we looking at for time, two minutes left so I'll put this back on and then in the second part of the video, which is going to be part two, we'll um, concentrate on putting it back together again. So let's clamp that down. Get the other one. I bet you've never seen a motor with, which holds together with these. And then that clamps in as well. So they're actually quite easy to go back on. Those are. Okay. So there we go, that's how you remove the motor from an Electrolux 500. While it is off I might as well put a couple of uh, drops of oil on that end bearing. It never hurts. Again, not too much oil because we don't want it going on that spindle. Just enough to run through the gap into the bearings. Good spin and watch all that oil disappear down that gap into the bearings. Oh, they love a good bit of lubrication there. They do. Righty ho, let's put the little seal back on. And that'll only go on one way because it's got a little tiny um, key on the top there with a little tiny uh, gap in. And that basically engages onto there. So that is how the motor would go, the housing would go back on there. So I'm going to end the th this video now and we will go again on part two, which is going to be how we would put it all back together. Um, so see you in part two.